All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. Today, going to do a little video on how we try to go from 11 to 20, uh, basically from 11 to true split back 20, and try to keep our core principles and our core identity of who we are so that when we teach it to the kids, we're trying to teach it to them as same as it's just <coughs> some different bodies doing the same job, but it's really same as principles with what we're trying to get accomplished. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, which is the headwear sponsor uh, for PlayFest and the school that I'm currently at. If you like custom hats, make sure you check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods, it's a company we use for our fan gear, player gear, coaches gear. Uh, they distribute our uniforms, spirit packs we get from them, uh, footballs, other things we get from Baker Sports. Check them out. Just Play Football, all right, digital software taking your program to the next level, the number one play drawing tool on the market. If I'm going to do any webinars or if I'm going to do uh, speak at any clinics, uh, anything for my Patreon site, I always use Just Play, so check them out. Game Strat, Sideline Replay System, we use, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable Sideline Replay System, we've been using it the last four years, absolutely love it. No hardware issues, they've been great, their customer service is unbelievable, check out Game Strat. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, get thousands of reps without needing a partner, in season, off season, work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, high and tight, shirt that I'm wearing today, ball security training aid. Work on ball security with your players. They have to hold the ball in the proper position. Wrist above elbow, high and tight, proper points of pressure in order to hear the beep. If they do not hear the beep, they are doing something wrong. So high and tight, you hear us getting better. And then Stand Perfect, a training aid that we use uh, early in the year, in the spring, in the summer, young players. All right, it's just a way to get more reps in stances, O-linemen, receivers. Uh, doesn't matter, DBs. Doesn't matter who you want to use it with. You put them on the ground where you want them. Now your kids can get into the proper stance. You don't have to worry about saying, hey, six inches apart, heel toe, uh, right foot back, left foot back. You put them on the ground where you want them. Your kids get in the stance. Now that they're in that stance, you say, hey, that's how I want you to stand on the right side of the offensive line. That's how I want you to stand on the left side of the, outside, on the, left side of the offensive line. That's the heel toe stagger relationship I want. You don't have to worry about buzzwords. You don't have to worry about moving their feet. Put them on the ground. Great for baseball, softball, golf, football. A lot of different ways you can use it. Check out Stand Perfect. All right, so we base, uh, last two years, we've been basing kind of out of 11 personnel with a tight end. Uh, the tight end has been removed, and he is a creates a three-man surface. All right, so he is attached to the core, but he is off the ball because we like to do different things with him, uh, different insertion points, different things within, uh, within our offense. So... What I want you to look at is, let's say if you were a base, if you were a base zone team for argument's sake, all right, and let's say you had your standard inside zone, all right, where you're going to work your standard inside zone rules, and you start off maybe with him trying to kick out the five technique, all right, and you're running inside zone then, right? So you have your standard inside zone rules with that tight end kicking the five technique, trying to dig out that five technique. All right, maybe from here, all right, so let's just say for argument's sake in the zone world, if we start off with zone kick, all right, maybe from here you arc release, and now you go to some type of zone read scheme, right? So now you keep your zone theory the same, and now you arc release, and you go to some type of zone read theory. Let's say that maybe you lock the backside, and you go to some type of zone insert theory, where he's your insert player, all right? So let's just say for argument's sake, you go to a zone insert theory, right? And then let's just say for argument's sake, you carry an RPO where you are traditional zone, put him in the flat, blocking one and two, all right? So now maybe you're going zone slice, zone sneak, uh, whatever you want to call it. Everybody's got different terminology. So let's just say those are the... Those are the four things or the four premises within the inside zone world that you're living in. All right, what we try to do when we get to 20 personnel is we try to explain to our kids when we go to 20 personnel, we will go to true split back 20. All right, and the reason we do so is we'll take our tight end and we'll put him out here. All right, and what that does sometimes is it gives us a bigger body in the slot so that when we want to get the ball out to the perimeter, all right, so obviously we'll carry power read, we'll carry power toss read, uh, so we'll carry things where we want to get the ball to the perimeter. Well, in our 11 personnel, when that slot player is more of a wide receiver type, 
and you're playing against Apex, Nichols, or Sam linebackers, a lot of times we might have trouble blocking the perimeter. All right, when we, when we go to true split back, two things. Number one, it goes to a two by one set and it gets us out of three by one so we can initiate or elicit a different box look or different coverage structures because now we are in two by one, two back. We're not in three by one with that Y attached. So we don't have that Y attached as a number three over here. So what ends up happening is we may see, we may be able to dictate some different fronts, some different boxes, some different coverage structures. All right. The other thing is we're able to get a bigger body in the slot so that if we want to work the ball to the perimeter, we can do so. Right. So if you just looked at the same theories here, all right, and we wanted to run zone kick, we'd run it the same way and you would just take the extra body that went in and you would make him the kick player. All right. So for us, all right, the way we do it for us in our offense is we put the tail back away from the call and we put the back that comes in to the side of the call. They both have to be ball carriers. They both have to understand how to kick, how to bluff, or on the read concept, how to insert, and then they both have the potential to be slice players and get the ball in the flat, right? So if we started with just zone kick, the same play, we still run inside zone, and now that backside tailback, that second back becomes the kick player. So really, in, in reality, all right, he is just replacing what the Y was doing when you were in three by one. All right, so you've got the same structure. Your offensive line is blocking the same plays. You're running the same plays, you're just doing it from different personnel. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the core of your offense intact so that when you put in a different formation, the kids don't feel like you're installing a new offense, right? So if we wanted to go to a zone read theory, all right, we do the same thing inside zone, take him as if he's going to kick, and then just work him around in a bluff theory. All right, so for us, if we wanted to go zone read, we would give that tailback and that quarterback a call so that they understand now, instead of kicking that end, we are going to book or read that end. And now, because it's a two-back or a 11 personnel scenario, now we're going to arc and give the quarterback an escort on the perimeter, all right, with a read call, a book call, a bluff call, however you want to look at it. You're going to give that guy a call that lets him know, don't touch the end. First play, we kick the end. Now we want to not touch the end. If he's a hard squeeze player, make it look like you're going to kick. He'll squeeze off the zone block, all right, and we'll go by him. And now if the quarterback pulls, he's got an escort for scrape exchange if they want to run the mic, right? If we were to run zone insert, it's the same thing. We're going to lock the backside here, insert that player, and still run inside zone the same way, right? So we're carrying all the same schemes in the zone game, in our zone world. We can get to all of our RPOs. We can do the same thing to the other side and make the tailback the ball carrier and make the H, all right, the, the kick player or the bluff player or the insert player, right? If we wanted to run zone slice, zone sneak, whatever you want to call it, and we wanted to run regular zone, read the end, and put that tailback in the flat while we're blocking out here, all right, we can do that as well. Okay, so we can do the same thing, all right, within the two-back world as we did in the 11 world. And for me as a coach on offense and defense, what I'm always trying to do is I'm always trying to keep things, especially with the O-line, but even with the skills and the quarterback, keep things as same as as possible so that when you jump in and out of different sets, you're jumping out of different sets to show your kids that, hey, we're trying to get in and out of different looks to get the defense to elicit different responses. Maybe we're trying to get a bigger body in the slot to block the perimeter. Okay. But when we do that, we're running the same offense. It's just a matter of teaching the extra back how to run all the tight end tags. Okay. So, you know, when we're in three by one, all right, one of the things we like to do in three by one is we like to run, okay, that was his own world, right? Kick, read, insert, slice. Well, in the in the three by one world, 11 personnel, all right, we like running power read, 
okay? And we also like running counter with RPOs, right? So if we were to run power read from this set, sometimes we'll toss power read it, sometimes we'll cross face. If we were to run power read from this set, all right, and we get our gallop double to the will, block back, pull and wrap there, all right, hinge the backside B gap. Now we're gonna arc and not touch the end. We're gonna arc and try and look for the mic. Put the back straight across the quarterback's face. Quarterback is gonna read that front side end for power read, right? So quarterback reads the end. We're running power read out of 11 personnel. If we do the same thing in 20, the extra back is now replacing the tight end. So the extra back will arc, not touch the end, look for the mic on run through or scrape, all right, and we still run power read. Now the Y is a bigger body, and this is why we like this set. Now we've got the tight end in the slot to try and handle, handle and, and pin the nickel inside if we're getting two read or we're getting inside leverage. We've got a bigger body in the slot. It's the same as play. We're carrying the same play that we carried in 11 personnel, okay? We're just changing the Y that was the arc player for scrape exchange is now the back. The same tailback's getting the ball, the quarterback's making the same read, it's same as, okay? When we run count, all right, so one of the things we like to do is we like to run counter and tag RPOs, all right, because our X is a pretty good receiver. So in 11, all right, we like to run counter and we like to tag RPOs to it. So what we'll do is we'll run counter, all right, where we'll hinge the backside, block back, down, down the backside backer, pull the garden kick, use the Y as the wrap, counter here, and let's say we're going to run glance on the outside out there. All right, so we're going to run counter back to the single, and we're going to run glance from 11 personnel, okay? As soon as we go to two back, the only thing that changes is the extra back is now the rat player, all right? He's now the puller. So the guard kicks and he wraps, and we've got the same counterplay with the same RPO, <coughs> all right, out of that two back set. Okay, so again, what you're trying to do for me is I'm always trying to create and teach same as as much as I can possibly do. All right, the more that I can teach same as to my kids, the more that I can teach them the understanding of uh, how to get in and out of different sets, run the same offense, all right, with different guys performing the same assignments. Now, obviously, you've got to have guys and body types that can perform that assignment. So if I'm going to run counter and I'm going to use another back as a wrapper, he's got to be able to block an inside linebacker. If I'm going to run a zone insert theory, he's got to be able to block an inside linebacker. So the body type and the player that you're using also has to be conducive to executing the assignment you need them to execute. But at the same time, you're creating a same as system where you're going from 11 personnel three by one to twins open two back and you're running the same things. To me, that's how you get consistency. That's how you get solid reps. You don't have to install a new offense. You're just installing it same as. Now, when I say that to you, is it that easy to do and teach? No, kids still get confused. Kids still, the extra backs, if they're tailbacks and now the second back, all right, it takes a little bit of teaching. But to me, I feel comfortable and confident knowing that I'm teaching same as theories. These plays are all the same we've been running from another set. We're just doing it with some different variables or some different people. We're not creating new terminology. We're not calling the plays anything different. All right, we're just using the same personnel, the same groups to get to some different things, maybe some different looks from the defense, all right, use some different bodies in the backfield. Sometimes our tight end also plays will linebacker. Sometimes we'll use that set and get them off the field and play a traditional slot so that we can rest our tight end, all right? So you've got to understand why you're trying to do certain things. All right, and then let's just say for argument's sake in the, in the base passing game, all right? So in the base passing game, if we wanted to run something traditional, 
All right, so if we wanted to run traditional three-man snag, let's say for argument's sake, all right, we can run snag, corner, flat, keep the tail back and stay protection, half slide away from the quarterback, big on big, man side on the front side of the scheme where he has his hot throws and his outlets, right? So we've got snag, corner, flat, okay? We can do the same thing in two back, and this is just the way we do it. So for us, the tailback goes away, the new back coming in goes towards. All right, that keeps a lot of our rules at power read, counter, keeps things to where the tailback is the ball carrier. Now that other back going in has to be able to run zone or duo. He has to be able to run certain things, but for us, because of our power read, counter game, and then some of our quarterback runs, putting the tee away from the uh, spread side makes things a lot easier for us. The only nuance you got to get into now is in the passing game, what we'll now do is we'll use the front side back as the flare release to get our third player to the flat, and now the tailback in stay dull read protection has to know that he's got to go from here and he's got to go cross country to double read to the front side because he wants to be on the man side. So he knows if that protection is Roger, all right, and it's Roger for him, and it's, let's say, Roger stay. He knows in Roger stay he needs to end up on the Roger side, check inside to outside backer before he can check down or do whatever he needs to do in the route concept, okay? So the reason we do that is because it's easier for us. We already have protection calls built in for the T. So when the H comes in, it's easier for us to push the H and use the T in his normal protection calls. All right, so that's why we do that. But again, we get to the same principles, and then on the back side, if we wanted to, we could run post by that guy. We can bring him in to run snag. We are run whatever we want on the back side with the X, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. But the bottom line is we get to the same as principles. It's still, the quarterback still has snag, corner, flat, okay? It's still a six-man protection where we are going to double read inside the outside backer with the tailback. So from both sets, we are in the same as running the same things. And to me, okay, a lot easier said than done, all right? But to me, when you rep it, if you want to go from the 11 world to the 20 world, all right, this is the most consistent, reliable way to go and get into same as series where you're not teaching a new offense, you're not teaching a ton of new installs. Now, even for us, all right, for our kids when we do this, we have to work on it week in and week out when we want to be in 20 personnel or when we have, sometimes for us it's how healthy are our backs. Do we have two or three backs that we like? You know, so when we want to use this, we have to rep it every week. It's not as simple to come out and say, hey guys, same as rip those plays. We just did it yesterday in our Monday script and we went through it and drew it on the board and said, all right guys, in two back, all right, this is zone insert, this is zone kick, this is zone read, all right, who's the zone player, who's the kick player, who's the read player, who's the insert player. We still have to teach it, okay? But once it's taught in theory, what your kids should be able to understand is it's a same as principle, all right? Same as system where you are just changing the formation and who the, the, the tight end extra back is. You're changing the guy in the slot if you want to get a bigger body in the slot. And now you're running your core offense. You're not creating a new offense. Two back doesn't become a brand new offense, a brand new install. It becomes all the same theories for the O-line, all the same theories for the back. The only thing you got to figure out is who's replacing the tight end. Who's replacing the tight end in the blocking scheme? Who's replacing the tight end in the pass routes? Once you get that figured out within your offense, you get to a point where you realize, same as core offense, base offense, 11 personnel, three by one, 20 personnel, split backs, twins open. Okay, so hopefully that helps you guys. I know a lot of you guys within your offense probably do a better job uh, than we do jumping in and out of things and keeping it same as all right, a lot of the teams that I watch and a lot of the guys that I admire, uh, you know, probably do a little bit better job than we do. This is just my take on how when we want to change or when we want to make changes and go from 11 to 20, 
how we should be able to do it with simplicity, how we should be able to teach it with simplicity. All right, again, does it always work that way? No. Uh, a lot of variables every week that you look at. All right, and you look at college football and you look at who you're playing. All right, and you look at, for argument's sake, look at Kevin Kelly that just went to Presbyterian, right? First two weeks of the year, I believe they were tops in, in offensive categories. They were doing great. Third game of the year, they play a scholarship team and they get beat 72 to nothing. Does that mean Kevin Kelly forgot how to call plays? No. Does that mean his guys forgot how to run plays? No. Does that mean that all the plays that they run don't work anymore? No. What it means is he probably ran into a team that was a lot better than they were, and it makes all the reads and the execution and everything you're doing a lot tougher. You know, two weeks ago, Alabama played Mercer. When Mercer plays Alabama, it's going to be a lot harder to execute as a 1AA or a smaller 1A, sorry, smaller 1A program against one of the Blue Bloods. Makes it a lot harder to execute, okay, and a lot harder to get your assignments done and your reads done when you're playing somebody who is that much more talented than you are. The hardest thing as an offensive coordinator or a coach is understanding, hey, is that a scheme issue? Are we in something that just absolutely doesn't work? Or is that something that is very good to us most weeks? And then there's going to be a couple weeks where we need to come up with some other ideas within our schematic philosophy because it's going to be tougher to execute against those guys. And high school football is more like that than college football ever will be. There are way more haves and have-nots in high school than there are in college. There's a lot more games in college, just like the NFL, that are closer in talent level, and it's going to come down to execution and schemes and, and, and good play calls and staying ahead of the chains. There's a lot more games in high school where the execution, the play calls, and the staying ahead of the chains are going to be way tougher than they are in college in the NFL because the talent level is going to be dramatically so much different. So the toughest part as a play caller on offense or defense in high school is understanding when you have something that is good, something that works, and then you have a couple weeks where you don't get the results that you want, and now you got to go back and look at it and say, hey, is that because of the scheme? Is that because of bad play calling? Is that because we're not teaching this correctly to the kids? Or is it because it's harder to execute those weeks when those guys are – you know, a lot bigger, a lot faster, a lot stronger. Like, I look at us on defense. We do not start a player over 200 pounds on defense. Our ends are about 200 pounds. Maybe one is 205. Our Mike linebacker is about 200 pounds. Our Will linebacker is about 180. Our nose guard is a quicker player that's about 175 to 180. Our nickel is about 175. We don't have a player over 200 pounds on defense. So there's certain weeks on defense when we go in – we are going to have a hard time stopping certain offensive schemes against certain teams when you don't have a player over 200 pounds and you're getting 21 personnel gap schemes run right at you physically or you're getting you know, 12, 13 personnel duo gap schemes that are running right at you and you don't have a player over 200 pounds and you're playing against 280, 290, 300-pound guards or tackles or centers. Okay, those weeks are going to be tougher to execute. That doesn't mean your defensive plan is bad. That doesn't mean that your defensive structure is bad. It just means that that week it's going to be a lot tougher to execute, and that's the hardest part as a coach is looking at those weeks and saying, hey, our scheme is okay. We just physically were outmatched. That's always going to be the toughest part of the job. That's always going to be the toughest part of what we do. All right, when do you have to make a systemic change, schematic change, and when do you have to just teach it better, call it better, stay ahead of the chains, and do a better job within your game plan. All right, so again, I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video or I jump on YouTube Live. I know I'm going to go on YouTube Live one night this week, just a matter of when I have free time. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like the video or don't like the video, leave a comment all the time. Any comment, even if it's negative, if it pertains to the video, I will always respond. It's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. That's what makes this platform great. If it has nothing to do with football and it's just negative in general, all right, I'm probably not going to respond to it or I'll just respond simply with a, hey, thanks for watching. All right, but anything that's football related, I will always try and respond, always try and get back to. If you leave me a comment about doing a certain video and I feel like I can do that video justice, I will try and do that video. All right, so again, thanks for everything you do for Play Fast. Stay safe out there. Hopefully you're having a lot of success. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will catch you guys next time.